talking about what brings us here today and why we call it to love is not an option and why we at this very moment we are all living and uh, why I want to talk to you about my constellations or my family constellation. So what you are seeing here is a drawing that was made probably 20 years ago or something like that uh, by Gala Fernandez. Gala is my associate, was my co-founder of a project that took me all around. And there you have Laga Gala in the very center of this drawing. I brought the original because it's it very rarely sees the light, but it's kept like uh, as the beginning, as the signature of our cosmology, our, of our myths and our folklore. So all the players, all the families here, even the dogs, uh, <laughs> all the people that has been collaborating, my hometown. So of course this is the inner language we created for us, but it's all here and it brought me till this very moment to talk with you about this project and our collaboration in this museum. Thanks to Emilia Ferreira, I don't know if she is already here, the director of NAC, uh, for bringing me and Nelson. And I'll tell you very shortly the story because we don't have much time and you guys came for the breakfast, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me jump here if I manage to do this presentation and let's go just here a bit. And I'll show you from here a bit of what we have been doing. Okay. So, um, so at the very beginning, there is this shape, and the story which I was telling you about this family which connect under this shape, which is called Laga, that's Gala on reverse. And me and Daniela Pais, we started this project again some 20 years ago. Actually, this year we celebrate the first landmark of this project was the National Design Award and uh, we received it in 2002, so in July 2002, I'll have some photos of, of that. It's very important. We started like next street here, a bit up. This is our first, first studio in Bux Bregenza, like two streets uh, to the right here. So I'm also back home uh, from this project. This was our studio. Okay, we put a bit of scenario, like, okay, <laughs> but, uh, I was very close to this. Um, and there's some detail of the studio. So the Lager Bank, uh, it's this. And uh, so as you see, this is a shape that fits into the body. Uh, it came from a skirt. It was a, from the conceptual point of view, is like a perspective, like I'm dressing this table right now. You're dressing your cars every day, your furniture. So we don't we use much more than clothes in our daily appearance. So. This bag uses this language and uh, and yes, it went well because people liked it and uh, Benetton grabbed it, Benetton, the, the group, the Italian group of clothing and we produced for them, so that's my next step to Italy with Gala the, from my family, which we started. This is actually a very cool photo was made at the time in San Francisco by a photographer already in Benetton for this project, so as you can see it looks like paper and you, you, you will see it in a moment. So the two is not an option starts here. It was a white canvas, we won this award, and everybody started to provoke us with uh, contaminations. So they wanted to belong to this family, I felt like they wanted to do something on this canvas. It was a very high tech, you see the material that it's made of, and they wanted to make something of it. So yes, people start drawing and we start making editions from it, like limited editions. Some with very famous whatever, and others just we call it to love is not an option because of that, because it was about, you know, the things you don't have an option, love. You just feel them, you go for them. You don't ask people being stopped in the street, what is that? And I draw on it, we receive calls, we, you know, we have a lot of stories from this. So like, love is nonsense, of course, it's one of the first. And it's from a Portuguese studio called Floor Design, Floor Design, Pepe Reverter, I'll go fast now, Jaime Ayon, which is also in the family, and Jaime is a big designer now, Craig Fember, so Bruno, all these guys are now, we are a family which met like 20 years ago. Oscar Manine, which by the way is here, and then you can actually see it, and probably touch it. Um, it's a very special moment for him, this guy was working with Pedro Almodovar, and um, 
So he just saw it as a very, if you, if you Google who is Mariné, it's a very famous name. Uh, he invented this famous sentence, Madrid me mata, uh, when we were in Madrid. So he worked with uh, Almodovar. This is actually from Alex de la Iglesia movie, Ocho Cintas Balas. I don't know if you guys are more underground on this movie. So he did this face himself, searching, you see. And at this moment, it's very ironic for me to see Mariné and why we started Love is Not an Option also in this kind of Western, spaghetti Western image. And uh, so I can, I can show you this one. And I have the chance to see another one, just for me to explain a bit also on the back. But I'll show all these collaborations. And this one, which probably Filippa, my beautiful assistant, can bring here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a drawing which we saw in the beginning. Gala called these drawings, like she was in the phone, always doing business for us, and you know, calling clients, you know, do you want this bag, you know, it started in Milan, selling it because of her. And she was on the phone doing this drawing, and she called it seg segregations of a delicate monster. So we are all delicate monsters, let's not fool us. We are all, we want, we are very delicate, but then we, you know. So this is that bag, the same very bag used. Uh, it holds 55 kilogram. I can show you the document then. So this material is called Tyvek. It's a high density polyethylene. It's like a space age material used by NASA, whatever. Uh, and it's the material you've seen all over for COVID now. When it protects the suits, the white suits, the space suits you see in the hospitals, which has been protecting us, also from radioactive bizarre. Let's hope not. Uh, uh, but I will sell a lot. <laughs> but you see, that's the metamorphosis, and that's how the bank lives through the time. This is 20 years old one, right? And this has been always with us, one of the first. And that's segregations of a delicate monster from Gala Fernandez. The phone called the doodling of the phone. You could hear, or if someone wants to touch it, I know. It's Philippa's real bag. Um, okay, for some por Portuguese people who know better, like this name, Jonah Vasconcelos, or Peter Saville, who doesn't know this well, this guy did the image of Joy Division, New Order, uh, you know, Givenchy, whatever. It's, it was a unique moment and a pleasure to, to work with Peter. And this is some of the exhibitions and some of the stuff we did all over. This was in Hong Kong, we did some contests in China. This was also 20 years ago, I was doing very old stuff. We did a lot of affairs, and that's what we come here to the museum to do, an affair. Uh, with, with Nelson, we had an affair. It's, it's long, but it's also an affair. This is by the Portuguese Center of Design. This is Elena Almeida, another name which is very famous here. I'll show you in a bit, because I have one here. Uh, we lost her like two years ago, it's a very important name. Um, and by Cultural Center of Berlin. This was in Ibiza for Café del Mar, we had to make money. Uh, <laughs> people, it's a studio, very famous studio, they do amazing imagery for big clients like Diesel in London. <coughs> Uh, Milk Magazine in Hong Kong. I don't know, this is from the beginning, Benetton Fabrica Masahiro. Unfortunately, I don't have it here. I don't know. <laughs> I have actually, uh, this is from Jaime Ayon, as you saw before, probably. But um, Masahiro is not Bob Marley, some people say. He's a Japanese colleague I had in Benetton, in the place I was working. And he has such a radiant energy that we want now. It is to bring some radiant energy. And thank you guys for waking up so early uh, this time. This is TAP Portugal, um, Young Creators Award, whatever. This is another project I did. So, Coming back to these affairs, and uh, let me jump again. Uh, I can show you some of the clipping as well here, uh, very fast of this of this time, but we'll just go fast because of the National Design Award. So this is the skirt, the original skirt where we came from. Uh, with the, so under this skirt is where Laga is, and under these two, this skirt and this dress. This was the support structure. So okay, this material is not, but then we developed the idea of the bag for it. Okay, just for you to know, it's the very beginnings from this collection uh, around I don't know where 2001 or something from Daniela Pais are still in the university. This is just some press clipping, but you see, this is the National Design Award in 2002, and uh, you can see some magazines uh, we love labels at the time. Um, <laughs> That's what keeps us there. This is the Benetton uh, Innovative Creation Center, Fabrica, 
actually for you guys who are in Lisbon, there is a shop here just in the main street in Rua Gabre. The top floor is the gallery, also what's our project manager, Fabrica Features. And of course, we always were worried about what's going on around the world, who knows Benetton communication, about the all that social issues and stuff. So this is the studio, and I'll just fast forward to talk about the project we have here today. This is many projects, collaborations, magazines, and stuff. Um, international, okay. So, what brings us to the museum was um, something from a very old friend, uh, a guy I never actually worked with, because he's the kind of guy who opens door, he comes from London, opens you, comes with a car, says, come on, let's go, and we don't know where we are going, and there he is, he just arrived, Nelson Ferreira, a big applause for my friend. Yeah. Uh, 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 so, he's the kind of guy that was coming to me, we met from other people in common, and always when he came, let's go, and you know, you this kind of friend that opens you, you know, you enter in a car, you don't know where we are going, and it can be days or months, that's Nelson. <laughs> so, and it's actually happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, this is Nelson. Okay, it's Nelson. Okay, let's go. Uh, it's into the wonder. You know, we just go into the wonder. And, uh, and that's what I always did with, with Nelson. And uh, so, when he invited me at the peak of the, um, of the pandemic, uh, with, um, with the project for kids, right, in this museum. And she, and she wanted to introduce me to, to the director. I said, oh man, the modern art museum, that's really heavy, you know, in, uh, in Portugal. <laughs> and, um, and then he said, no, no, we're gonna do, you know, it's online, kids' school, it's gonna be so fun. So, so we did Fum Gaga does that. <laughs> See, just the name is ridiculous, he invented it. <laughs> and, uh, and then, Fungaga, Fungaga means an orchestra out of pitch. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, yeah. It's a cacophony of the arts. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, I, I suppose, and he will talk to you guys later about Fungaga. I just brought what I did in this class. I think it was a huge success in Portugal for families with kids locked down, parents getting crazy. And not for the chance, that's right? 43,000 families were logging in. For, for okay, we saved many parents. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a 12 year old, so I guess. <laughs> and uh, the point, is, yeah, and exactly, I brought you, you know, some time ago, of course, my daughter, I'll show you. This is the first drawing she did in my bag ever for a TED, TEDx, TED, TED Kids lecture. So, so proud, Papa, so proud. And of course, uh, this, we did a project with Nelson. I did this project in a bag. We, we show this. This is, we have to see the video to understand how this mess happened. Uh, but it should be something you can do at home with no resources, with very basic uh, materials. So we had to do all the thinking behind to do, to do this project. So this was such a beautiful challenge. And thank you so much because it was a landmark during one of the most depressing times of our lives, being, being in lockdown with, the, with, the, with COVID, and, and we felt useful. So, back again um, to, to this, what I had to do at that time was, and was cancelled, was an exhibition in, uh, in Japan, with a guy, uh, again from this family, called Hideki Naba, Japanese uh, designer, and of course, for me, Japanese graphic landmark. Uh, maybe 10 years ago I met him. We will do an exhibition in March 2020, it was all cancelled. And uh, so the embassy and whatever, they said, why you don't do something connected with the Olympics? Because you'll have the 2020 Olympics. You must remember them because they were in 2021. And uh, so we, we, we lost all the year, but then we decided to do something not for the Olympics or just for the Olympics, but for the Paralympic team, Portuguese, Paralympic uh, Committee. So this is the, the edition uh, that was changed for the colors and everything with our flag for the for the Paralympic Committee in Tokyo. And that for me, I will show you now a bit of the of the video and why all this connection. But it was very very important. And um, let me just maybe put some video here. If we go direct for the video, maybe easier. Okay, that's the video here. And I will show you just, okay, in a sec, 
what is before these beds and actually why we connect. So these beds, I forgot to tell this in a little detail, they were made behind bars since 2005. Uh, why behind bars? Because when we went to Hong Kong, this exhibition we saw, we didn't like what we saw, so we decided to go behind bars. And uh, actually, we did, uh, this is a movie by Margarita Leitao, uh, the trailer here about what we did there, it's just a trailer, so we don't have time. Yes, to do it, I Okay, so we wanted to do it differently and design is about the way you do things and the story you have to tell about how you do them. So it's beautiful at the end, but if it's not beautiful when you do it, when you produce it, what we saw in China, for instance, at the time was not so. And, uh, and so that's what we, we did with this base. We created a studio in jail, and that's the story. Uh, if you Google the work of Margarita Leitano, I recommend you design behind bars. Uh, it's, of course, I cannot say less. It's beautiful. Uh, and it's the story of these women and how they do it. So back to this project. We could not work during the pandemic in jail because of the rules. Uh, they were very stiff with, the, with the, the pandemic rules inside jail and we managed to work uh, for the Paralympics in the project sorry that was my time I already but we are, you are also late so I think I'll check this video too because like very blah 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 Nelson was my ambassador, so as he challenged me to do this with the kids, I challenged him to be my ambassador for this project in Tokyo. And of course, we had a lot of fun, he was there. This is a women's uh, a social project in Marvilla, uh, which is focused on helping women uh, at a certain age uh, with uh, issues like the, uh, domestic violence, which was so important during the pandemic, because this was a kind of a shelter project for them, okay? And so this is all focused on textile, and this was very important to me to, to do yes, the ceiling of this space at this time, not in jail in our normal studio, but in this concept, in this space. This is one of our partners, it's a psychologist, who was also about mental well-being, and that's actually what you are here in the museum. We consider, Emilia considers the museum a place of mental well-being. So we have to use museums for well-being, for mental well-being. Okay, so I'll just jump here a bit because we have our partners, sponsors, and blah, blah, blah. And there is Nelson, I think I wanted to show Nelson with the, with the Paralympic team. Okay, there he is. I just think this photo is ridiculous. That's why I want to. <laughs> no, he's, he was an amazing ambassador, as he's for everything. So we continue with this idea. And actually, guys, to know more about this project, I think it's better. Oh, that's the the president of the. This this was never done with the design project, an artist, uh, you know, all these connections. And now I think we have. Uh, this looks like an Apple product. Uh, presentation. I would like to introduce Afonso from uh, yeah, Zoom Guide. I think it's very special because I'm going to pass you through all these bags and probably even try with the, with the app. So we have something to tell you all this story, which is faster. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if you guys go, yeah, he can do the demonstration. And so it works. We rehearsed all like five minutes ago. Yeah, so, so we tested this five minutes ago. It's the first time. Anyway, so let's see how it works. So, so for all you who have your browser uh, on your phones, you can just go to zoomguide.app. Yeah, dot app. He is the, one of the masterminds behind this award that I will show the project. And, um, and if you, I can pass you the bag and you can try with your own phones. And then let's see. A little internet connection here. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, because this museum still doesn't have internet. Um, no, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. Are, you, are you finding yeah. something? I'll give you another bag for the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
You can use both sides to scan it. I think it's the thick walls, you know, there's no internet connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not very yeah. reliable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some people can, some people can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll sit in the garden. Okay, okay. We'll sit in the garden. okay so I, I presented you from here. It's okay. Okay, great. I will share from here. Uh, and now should be okay. Uh, just take a to, to the back. So what you're going to find is the same information from the project, but there you can use for the first time, I think, at least in Portugal, in this, this kind of collaboration, of a design piece, which is which has this kind of uh, image recognition directly from the object, right? And the story of all these bags will be told like that. We are creating a digital vault, a cloud. Of all the 20 years of editions, there are more than 80, around 100 now, in all over the world, and you will be able to just scan them uh, from your phones in this museum, in the shop of this museum. There will be some experience, and other places like hotels and other places who we have as partners. And then again, is the story here, and uh, you see that's what I sold about the bag before. Uh, not iron it, okay? Uh, we don't do refunds, and uh, it's <laughs> and that's the jail. That's the Geo Studio, that's my beloved Violeta, uh, that's the beginning of this project in Geo. Uh, you see where this stamp is a social stamp. Um, that's some guy from the Olympic team. Uh, in, uh, uh, and uh, that's again uh, Nelson with this guy. And you'll see, you will know, see, you explain why he came here. I think he did well. So these things. Yeah. They don't know who he is. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's a guy we have in charge for the, for the country. And um, <laughs> so, with the bags who are not really used for the committee, but some, you know, who are geeky about graphics. And um, we decided to upcycle them in this fashion. We give these tools to Nelson as well. And Nelson did an amazing job, which I hope is he, he will be explaining it as well. And uh, it's here. Well, we have. Actually, uh, we have them here. This one is here with us, and uh, and this will be introduced. And Antonio, of course, Antonio is the other uh, Nelson. I should say is the first ever res artist in residence in this museum from the 100 years plus he does. And we did this project. And there we have some guy. You can see all the, the words from these guys and all the story. And these corners will be available for these bags at this shop and other shops, and of course our online shop where you can use this. And uh, this was 20 years ago, was the other guy. This was the first edition, actually, from the graphic designer, uh, Daniel and me. I look exactly the same. And <laughs> apparently, uh, we miss this guy was a former president when we received the ATO. So just to, to go back for this, on this story. And uh, I think for the moment, that should be all. Uh, I can just give you a last input of what's coming also. So the next version of this bag, besides the ones from Nelson, it's going to be the, the one which we'll be doing before. And this bag, it's powered by good bag. Uh, besides having the recognition, there's an app for it, there's a sensor here. This is just a prototype, so it's not even to... I'll try to do it with the, with the phone, if it's recognized here, something, I don't know. There's a sensor on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's opened up, yeah. Okay, so good bag app, for you have to download it, of course. It's a partner, uh, and you can offset the carbon from our bags. You can offset the plastic production. Uh, the, the producer of this material, DuPont, it's my sponsor. And I want to do this in the circular economy fashion. And uh, actually, good bag is the great thing. You already have them in supermarket chains here as Continente another type of bag, but this edition will make it in a partnership. So they will have these ships, this NFT, IOTs, whatever, and you'll be able to use it. So, and that's sync. And just to conclude my idea of family, I want to also go a bit to the end about, about this, about what Nelson said and traveling. Uh, we were, we will be now, again, yesterday I think we met a family here, and I found this very interesting. We found a family from uh, Mexico here, and uh, 
this guy. This was made yesterday uh, here at the museum. And so one of these guys was from next to my hometown, it was totally improbable. The other guys are from the other side of the world, blah, blah, blah. And I did these bags in Mexico, and we decided to put them back in this museum too, as a, as a partnership. And, um, and I think for ending, I don't know if I want to, to say what you said at the beginning, also why I started this family, and people who travel here, and I want to talk about you, a bit, because uh, exactly one month ago, like uh, someone jumped in the car, not for the best reasons. He was here. She was here four months ago, with the best tech, uh, innovative ecosystem in uh, Web Summit, and this time she she was planning to come in in, in summer or or spring, and we are in spring, so everything goes right. But uh, as I did with Nelson, she she's one of those who just jumped in the car and came to see me and be part of this family. She is now here with us. It's Tatiana, which, uh, of course, she's here with us. Uh, this is in my house. We, we have her family we had. This is one of a great friend, a person with the real innovative tech environment, and she's very welcome to Lisbon. I hope today it's for you. Uh, and also this venue, made by Irina, it's for you, this creative morning which we saw in Odessa, which is her hometown. And I hope you guys meet her and know more about her. That's the reason we are all here in Lisbon today. So, okay, I think it was enough, okay? All right, I'd like to tell you some stories which have to do with ancient Greece. I've decided that my fine arts um, training was not relevant anymore for the current days that we are facing, actually since, since the 90s. What happened was that most of the fine arts trainings that we've received in art schools, artistic training during the 20th century, in my opinion, was a bit of a disaster. The 20th century will be remembered as the century of science. But artistic accomplishment pale in comparison with the scientific revolutions that we had during the 20th century. Yes, we had a lot of modernisms. We have isms for every taste. And this is my critique. I think the visual arts became a kind of a decorative art. They cater to a certain public, they sell a certain product, and they're just decoration. And because in the West we have this tendency of not sticking to any kind of beliefs or, or, or even love, love is taboo. You don't talk about love in erudite speech. You don't talk about love in art, in the contemporary arts. That's taboo. It's kitsch, they say. It's not intellectual, they say. And I want to challenge that. So I'm going straight back to the ancient Greeks. There was no more intellectual people, <laughs> more than these so-called academics and experts that say you should not talk about these things. And what happens during the 20th century, I repeat, is that art became just an entertainment for the super lords. The elites have got nothing to do, so every two or three uh, years they change the decoration for their homes. Do you know what I mean? It's a very, very, very low bar to live for. So, when I finished my artistic training, I decided to start learning proper painting. And I hope that this will be an inspiration for all of you, because there are lots of creative people in here, and there's also people that come from a business background, and sometimes you want to think outside the box. I hope there will be something in these stories for every single person in this room, and perhaps for a few people that are still upstairs waiting to come in. I hope there is something for everyone. I'm going to start with a tale, Apelles and Protogenes. How do you spell that? How do you pronounce it? <laughs> it's written in Greek underneath. 
So whoever can read it, go ahead. We don't have paintings from ancient Greece. They haven't survived. They're all gone. But we have stories, we have narratives that describe the paintings quite well. And the ancient Greeks considered that the art of painting was more developed than the art of sculpture. And the Greek sculptures are quite something to behold. Ha! Paintings were better, according to the Greeks. Now, we have some tales, as I was telling you, we don't know how they looked like, but we can be quite certain that they valued uh, excellent technique. Come on, just look at, at the Greek vases. They're superb. And they were not made by fine artists, they were made by craftsmen. Ask your local craftsmen to do a Greek vase, they can't do it. Nowadays, you know, they can't do it. Look at the glorious paintings from Pompeii, which were Roman, but again, they were not painted by artists. They were painted by decorators. Ask your decorator to paint those landscapes. They can't do it. The fine artists, which were considered even better, we don't have any work in painting uh, from those times, okay? We'll leave it to imagination. Let's start with the first story, Apelles and Protogenes. According to the legend, Apelles went to visit Protogenes, and when he has arrived, Protogenes wasn't at home. So the housemaid asked Apelles to please say his name. He refused. He said that instead he was going to leave a trace that Protogenes would recognize. And what was that trace? Apelles went to one of the boards that Protogenes was painting, because they were both painters, this white board, and he paints the finest line cutting through the whole board without any mistake. When Protogenes arrived home, he realized that must have been Apelles, because nobody could paint like that. But in order to outrun Apelles, in order to create a challenge, he takes the brush, Protogenes takes the brush, and paints an even finer line inside the line that Apelles had painted. So imagine a human hair, and then you paint a line even finer inside. The second time Apelles returned, he saw the line inside his line, so he decided to prove once for all that he was the finest painter in Greece. He takes again the brush and finally he paints a line that is so thin, so thin, that it's hardly visible and it's impossible to improve upon. Pliny the Elder saw that painting, the historian. Pliny the Elder, remember? He died at the Vesuvius trying to save the people from Pompeii and Herculaneum. It was the first time in recorded history that there was a fleet of ships trying to save people. It was a rescue mission. Pliny died because of the volcanic uh, ashes. But Pliny the Elder that wrote the encyclopedia, he tells many stories. So now you know the story of the thin lines and the love for precision. I'm going to tell you now a second story. Zeuxis and Paragius. Now this second story is also about technique. It's also about the importance of being truly good at what you do, being the best. Not just truly good, being the best at what you do. Zeuxis and Parasius, they were having an argument. They both had an ego, I believe. And they both claimed to be the finest painters in Greece. They both said I'm the best. The other said I'm the best. So, so there was this contest. And finally, <laughs> they set up with the public, of course, everybody had to witness the moment. The public would vote. Now, Zeuxis, he had the power to treat nature. Every time Zeuxis would paint, for example, a still life, the birds would fly from heaven and try to pick on the grapes. The insects would fly towards the flowers. The rodents would try to eat whatever was in there. So Zeuxis had the power of tricking nature. 
Now, according to this story, Zeus painted his usual trick. He painted a still life. Then you had a barrier, so Parajus couldn't see. Parajus approaches Zeus and he says, You are the superior painter. I'm so ashamed of showing my own painting, says Parajus. Zeus starts feeling secure <laughs> of the victory. And then a miracle happened. And Zeus was even more secure about his victory. A bird flies from heaven, tries to pick one of the grapes, but because it crashes against the wall, it falls on the ground, faints, reawakens, and flies off. In that moment, Zeus knew that he was going to win, because nature itself had been deceived by his painting. Parajus carries on and he says, I am humble and I don't know, I don't want to show you my painting. In that moment, Zeus <laughs> approaches Parajus' curtain and he goes, he pulls the curtain to try to uncover Parajus' painting. But then somehow he misses the curtain. <laughs> and then he pulls it again. <laughs> He misses it. To his horror and utter shock, he realizes that he has been deceived. That's not a real curtain, that was Parajus' painting. So, the Greeks conclude Parajus is the superior winner because Zeuxis tricks nature, but Parajus tricked Zeuxis. <laughs> Alright? I'm going to leave you now with the third story which is going to be projected. So I'm going to ask if somebody could, uh, could tell the security to turn off the lights, please. Or would you mind? Thank you so much. And before we project the video, I'll just prepare everything. Let's do this. I'll tell you a quick story. Because I found um, technique to be lacking in most of 20th century training and 21st century as well. I mean, the arts must be the only expertise where you cannot distinguish the work of a beginner from the work of a master, because they all look the same. And this is a, this is a problem. So, I've created a series of very intensive, uh, high quality art courses, which go back even to Renaissance times. And the one you're about to see, <laughs> it's also a story. Every artist needs a muse. So, every artist needs a muse. And this is a moment where I'm about to find the muse of painting. I will tell you later what's going to happen. This was filmed at the Royal Palace of Lisbon, Palacio Nacional da Ajuda. And whether you believe it or not, it's going to be an art course I've never seen an art course set up in such a manner, so I hope this is a world's premiere of something new, never seen before, worldwide. I hope. Now, I just want to tell you um, a story after we've completed the video projection, okay? This is an eight-minute projection. I hope you enjoy it. I'll tell you more about it at the end.
in order to complete today's session and to inspire you now, the creative ones out there, I'm going to tell you a last story. There we are. Joel and Butades. According again to Pliny, the elder, that historian I was telling you about, Butades was a sculptor and he was actually a potter. And his daughter, Cora, she fell in love with a man, with a young soldier, and he was going to war. And because she knew that she would not see him alive again, with a bit of charcoal, she outlines the shape of his shadow that he was projecting on the wall, so that she would never forget him anymore. And that was the birth of drawing. Then according to Pliny, he carries on the narration, Cora was absolutely devastated when she found out that her boyfriend, the soldier, was killed at war. So when his body came back home, dismembered, she only had the line of charcoal to remind her of him. So she asked her father for help. Butades was a very, very skillful potter. He prepares the clay. He puts the clay inside the outlines that she had drawn a few months before. And they try to emulate the shape of the dead man in order to immortalize him. And that was the birth of sculpture. And then Pliny concludes that the sculpture went to bake in the oven together with some other pots that the father had done that day. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Whatever you do, do it for love. You can never be truly magnificent in anything remotely artistic if you're not 100% passionate about what you are doing, even if you're painting hatred, even if you're painting the lack of love, but you must be totally, totally enamored with the subject that you choose. So I'm going to leave you with this thought from the ancient Greeks. Over 2,000 years ago, they've left us with these wonderful narrations and tales. I hope you enjoy the garden, I'm going to ask those who have not produced an original artwork yet to do it, because it's your painting to take home. Those who have not drawn flowers in the f in, on the floor yet, please do it, because we're going to create an explosion of color in the garden space upstairs. And those who wish your painting to be uh, dated and signed by me, I'm very happy to do it just today. <laughs> so you can have an original to take home with you. Thank you so much for your presence.